So we are going to prove that similar matrices correspond to isomorphic fx modules. So let's suppose we have two fx modules m and n that are both finitely generated. We know that then they're both described as vector spaces f to the m and f to the n, where multiplication by x is given by some matrix. So in m, multiplication by x is described by the matrix A, and over here it's described by B. Our goal is to show the following statement. M is isomorphic to N, this is as Fx modules, if and only if there exists some matrix P, an N by N matrix over F, such that B is equal to P A P inverse. So this over here is exactly the condition for A and B to be similar matrices. Now, in order to do this, we're going to start with a statement over here. Suppose that M is isomorphic to N. What does that tell us about these two modules? Well, first of all, remember that every Fx module is also a module over a field. In other words, these two are vector spaces. They're given by F to the M and F to the N. So if these two are isomorphic as Fx modules, they also have to be isomorphic as F modules. And we know that two vector spaces are isomorphic only if they have the same dimension. So that means that these two have to be the same dimension. Instead of writing F to the M and F to the N, we can describe both of them using just one letter. So I'm gonna use N in this case because we have our N by N matrix over here. Now, if we have two Fx modules being isomorphic, that means there has to be an isomorphism. So let's see what the isomorphism looks like. We're gonna have some map Psi that takes elements in M to elements in N. And we know that the elements of M and N can be described as these vectors in Fn. So we can also say that Psi goes from Fn to Fn. Now, if Psi is an isomorphism, it needs to be a homomorphism. So let's look at those conditions first. We know that psi of m1 plus m2 has to equal psi of m1 plus psi of m2. And we also know that psi needs to be linear in polynomials in f of x, so we can pull out polynomials. In order for that to be true, we just need psi to be linear in f and linear in x. Then if we have a bigger polynomial, we can just pull out the constants and then pull out the powers of x one by one. So let's check what those two conditions tell us. First of all, if we have some c being in the field, then psi of cm is equal to c times psi of m. And then also, psi of xm is equal to x times psi of m. So first, let's take a look at these two conditions right here. These two, since C is an element in a field, these are the conditions for Psi to be a linear transformation from Fn to Fn. And we know that every linear transformation can be described by a matrix. So we can describe Psi of M as equal to Pm for some matrix P, an n by n matrix over the field F. This is just from those first two conditions. And after that, we have this final condition. Now, in order to understand what this means, we need to rewrite this x times m in terms of the matrices. We know that in the module m, multiplication by x is the same as multiplication by the matrix A. So in here, x times m, this is the same thing as A times m. Over here, psi of m, that's in n, so multiplication by x is the same as multiplication by b over here. And now we can rewrite this again because we said psi of m is equal to p times m. So we can replace those two instances of psi in the equation. So now we have a description that's just in terms of the matrices. Now we want this equation to be true for every single possible vector m in Fn. But the only way this is true for every element of Fn is if these two matrices are the same matrices. So 
That means that we get as a result PA equals BP. And the last condition for psi to be an isomorphism is that it is a bijection. In particular, psi is going to have a two-sided inverse. So if psi is described by this matrix P, P is also going to have a two-sided inverse. So let's multiply by P inverse on the right side of this equation. If we do that, instead of PA equals BP, we're going to have PAP inverse equals B. And there we go, A is similar to B by the matrix P. Now it's important to recognize that this is not an existence statement. It's not just an existence statement. This is a very specific matrix P. This matrix P is the isomorphism from M to N. So what this is saying is if M is isomorphic to N, then B is similar to A by the isomorphism, which is a really interesting idea. But the fact is that the equation BP equals PA, this is really saying that psi has to be linear in X. And so this equation is telling us exactly what an isomorphism has to be, along with the fact that it's a matrix, meaning that it is a linear transformation of the vectors, and it's invertible, meaning it has to be a bijection for an isomorphism. And this entire proof is basically a series of equivalent statements. So we only proved the statement in this direction, but you could also prove it in the reverse direction by basically following the steps backwards. Starting with PAP inverse equals B, you multiply by P on the right side, and then because it's a linear transformation and it's linear in X, you show that P describes an isomorphism, and then you get the isomorphism like you want. So just like that, we've shown that two FX modules are isomorphic if and only if the matrices are similar.